The Elixir Golem is one of the most interesting cards ever added to Clash Royale. This is because if played incorrectly, it can very easily benefit the opponent more than the person who placed it, and yet historically, it's been claimed to be the lowest skilled card in the game ever. It looks quite similar to the size and shape of the normal golem, and splits into golemites when destroyed, like a normal golem. The e-golem has similar health to a balloon, deals less damage per hit than a golem, but has a much faster hit speed, meaning it actually has a higher DPS than the normal golem. But while the golem sits at a whopping 8 elixir, the elixir golem is only 3. This is compensated by the fact that the elixir golem gives elixir to the opponent when destroyed. A total of 4 to be exact. So why is this card considered to be so low skill? Why is it so annoying to so many people? We're going to be covering those questions and the entire history of the card in this video. It may not have been in Clash Royale as long as most cards, but there is a lot to talk about. The Elixir Golem was soft-released into Clash Royale in October 2019, but we're not even going to start there, because this card actually has years, yes, years of history before its actual release. So we're going to be starting all the way back in 2017. We saw a lot of cards being released around this time, so obviously there were a lot of card ideas floating around. On February 21st, 2017, the official Clash Royale channel uploaded a Radio Royale episode talking about scrapped card ideas, and this is where the first public mention of the Elixir Golem happened. What would you consider the craziest troop mm, that we've craziest. tried? Craziest. It might have to be the Elixir Monster. The Elixir Monster was this idea that you, you the elixir has somehow mutated into this monster. If you attack it, it splits into two, much like the golem works. Those little elixir mites, I don't know what you would actually <laughs> call them, they would regrow back into full-size elixir monsters if you left them alone. As you can hear from that, it was originally called the elixir monster. The basic design idea was similar to the elixir golem today, a mutated monster made of elixir that would split into elixir mites, but rather than giving your opponent elixir, it was planned so that the elixir golemites would eventually grow into full-sized golems. According to the podcast though, it sounds like it was scrapped due to balancing issues. Is that, do you think there's any kind of way that we could balance that to make it, make it work? I'm not sure. However, this wouldn't be the last we heard about the Elixir Monster until 2019. A little over a month after this podcast dropped on April 1st, 2017, Supercell tweeted an image with the caption, Sneak Peek, the future of clan battles, where you can see part of an Elixir Golem on the very edge of the image. Yes, this image was really tweeted by Supercell themselves over two years before the official introduction. Now, obviously this 8v8 concept was a complete joke for April Fools, but some speculated that the Elixir Monster being included was a teaser for its inclusion. It seemed unlikely since they had confirmed it was scrapped only about a month prior and they had recently put Troop That Multiplies Over Time on their ruled out ideas list, likely directly referencing the Elixir Monster. But the fact that there was an official, fully made render of the troop gave some players hope. Shout out to this guy though for accurately predicting the real name early on. After this image was posted, the community never really forgot about the Elixir Golem. You saw fan art, card concepts, and sometimes people would just repost the image from that April Fool's Day which would re-spark discussion about the Elixir Monster. All these things I just showed you were found over the course of years. Through 2017, 2018, and 2019, people were constantly bringing up the Elixir Monster, wanting to see it be implemented in some form. It was an interesting concept that clearly many did not want to see go to waste. Although the community was not letting the spirit of the Elixir Monster die, Supercell hadn't acknowledged it since that April Fool's image was posted. Most people didn't expect the Elixir Monster to ever be added at this point. Supercell themselves said it was scrapped, and they were probably just trying to have a little fun on April Fool's and not let a render they had worked so hard on go completely to waste. But suddenly, out of nowhere, on September 28th, 2019, Supercell posted a video talking about a generic update, but it had a thumbnail with an ominous creature in it. And for a brief moment during this video, they talked about a new card that would be coming out very soon. Shortly after this update drops, there's a new card coming to Clash Royale. It's going to be called... I did not cut the audio there, that's how it was posted. But given the theme of this video, and knowing what card was actually added to the game a few weeks later, you can probably guess what he was saying. All that was said about it at the time though was... Low cost, powerful, there's a catch. As you heard, the video confirmed the Elixir Golem would be 3 Elixir, and it was said that it would be powerful with a catch. 
Nobody was quite sure what that meant, but they would soon see. The card actually ended up being leaked on September 30th, where the players found out that each of the Golemites would spawn into two elixir blobs, and each of those four blobs would give the opponent one elixir. Players were really confused and thought the elixir golem was some sort of joke. Why would anyone ever spend elixir to give their opponent elixir? Supercell had been purposely releasing cards in an underpowered state throughout 2019, but this just seemed ridiculous. Seth, who was the head of balancing, did an interview after the elixir golem was revealed, but before it was released, where he shared an interesting history about how the elixir golem was originally balanced before release. The very first version was insanely strong. <laughs> when we set it off to playtesting, it came back with like a really, really high win rate. And that was actually a four cost elixir golem that had significantly higher stats. It was more like, like an eight or nine cost card for four. That was really, really strong. We both reduced the stats uh, dramatically, but also cut it down to three cost because we felt we wanted to separate him from Battle Ram and hog rider like how can we really make him unique and something you'd really want to play and three cost felt like the right discounted amount he also stated that it was intended to be a little stronger on release so it wouldn't have an underwhelming launch like some of the cards released earlier that year i think it's gonna be very strong i think we learned our lesson from wall breakers like i said earlier we want to make sure these cards uh, are coming out a little bit more on the aggressive side because even if he's a little on the strong side he doesn't defend himself even though this card was looking to be underwhelming players were excited to see this long teased card finally enter the arena at last but it wouldn't be long until the elixir golem broke everybody's expectations the Elixir Golem was first available to play on October 11th, 2019. It wasn't going to be fully released until November 2019, but if you got 8 wins in the Special Elixir Golem Draft Challenge, you could unlock it early. Since Pass Royale was in the game, and because you only needed 8 wins instead of 12, more players than usual were able to get the card early than some of the previous cards released this way. If you didn't get the card early, you were going to have a tough time this season, because the Elixir Golem was meta-defining. I'm not exaggerating. This card was arguably one of the strongest cards in Clash Royale history, and by far the strongest win condition in the game, and thus it was the most popular. In Grand Challenges, this card's use rate was hovering around 35% with a very high win rate. It's especially impressive when you understand that a huge chunk of the player base didn't even have access to the card. Overall, the best way I would describe this card is being an alternative to the standard Golem, which is crazy to say considering their elixir costs are a difference of 5, when in any other situation, a card's alternative is almost always at most a 1 elixir difference. But remember, since the elixir Golem gave 4 elixir to the opponent, opponent, it was more comparable to a 7 elixir troop. Considering the elixir golem's similar purpose and greater strength, the regular golem's rates tanked for this season. Comparing the stats of the two golems, they were still very similar cards. They had practically the same DPS, and if you add up the health of the elixir golem in all its forms, it was almost exactly the same as the golem. The stats also scaled consistently through the Elixir Golem in all its forms. The damage and health was halved for each descended form, so one Elixir Golem had the same stats as two Elixir Golemites or four Elixir Blobs. Despite having the same health as the Golem if you sum up all the forms, it was still a bit easier to counter than a normal Golem since Splash cards could attack multiple of the Mites and Blobs with each attack. But at the same time, that's what made typical high damage golem counters worse at countering it. You'd want to use high damage dealers to take out the golem in its first form, but once you got down to those little blobs, splash cards would be the most efficient. So having just a high damage dealer or just a splash card to counter with would still allow the elixir golem to get a lot of damage. And these little blobs had way more health than you would think. They had 352 health at level 9 tournament standard, which was more than the princess, meaning they survived arrow. One important thing to note about the Elixir Golem is that even though their health and damage scaled consistently through forms, their damage per second did not. This is because the hit speed was actually faster for the lower forms. This was an insane amount of stats for a 3 Elixir card, which was obviously the whole gimmick, but the downside was not detrimental enough to make the card balanced. You see, with Golem decks, they're typically played by building up big pushes to completely take down the opponent's tower in one go. So this is pretty much how the elixir golem was played, but since the defender didn't get the elixir until the blobs were destroyed, the offender had a way higher value push than the defender could reasonably deal with. Mostly by the time the opponent got that 4 elixir, one of their towers was already destroyed. 
And for many archetypes that depend on not losing a tower, it was devastating. Especially when they're playing something like a cycle deck, where their playstyle involves fastly cycling and chipping, not banking elixir and building up pushes. The elixir golem changed the entire dynamic of the match. It completely disrupted the flow of elixir by adding more in. In a standard 3 minute match, a player would get 86 elixir if they didn't leak any. But if you cycled 3 or 4 elixir golems in that time, it would allow your opponent to get an extra 12 to 16 elixir, while you could place more than 86 elixir worth of troops. You could play strong cards without a lot of elixir, and now the opponent had more elixir to play with. No other card disrupted the flow quite like this. The only one that even comes close is the elixir collector, because you spend 6 to generate 8. But even this didn't come close to the elixir golem, because when you played the pump, you were at the disadvantage since your opponent would have 6 more elixir than you. But if you played an elixir golem, the opponent didn't have the initial advantage, you did. Plus, the elixir from the elixir collector was never guaranteed, as you could take out the card with things like big spells and miners. Alright, now let's go over some of the top decks you initially saw the elixir golem in. The most common partner to the elixir golem was the night witch. Considering the night witch had been a staple of golem decks for its whole existence, it was a no-brainer that you would see this card everywhere with the new strong golem variant. But it was more than that, because only a few days prior to the elixir golem's release, it received a buff where it got two additional death bats. Meaning she wasn't just strong in beatdown, she was strong, period. After players noticed the Night Witch was being played a lot more, it was frequently commented on as being a badly timed buff, since she would have likely seen a huge rise in play thanks to the overpowered Elixir Golem regardless of the change she received. You also saw the E Golem paired with the Normal Witch quite a bit. The synergy wasn't as great, but the Witch received a huge buff in the last set of balance changes as well, making her appear just about everywhere. These factors led to some popular E Golem Double Witch decks rising up. You also saw the Elixir Golem paired with Sparky. Since Sparky was a 6 elixir support card, fitting her into a normal golem deck wasn't really feasible. But with the elixir golem's cheap cost, it allowed for more flexibility and thus a lot of players saw success with the combo. Finally, I wanted to mention the elixir golem mega knight combo. Mega Knight was extremely popular in this meta since it was one of the best counters to the Elixir Golem Witch combo. Now, remember when I was talking about how there wasn't a great single counter to the Elixir Golem? Well, there actually was one, and that was the Bomb Tower. The Bomb Tower was easily considered the best counter to the Elixir Golem. Not only was it one of the few cards to be able to distract the E Golem since it was a building, but it dealt both high and splash damage, so it was the near perfect counter. The Bomb Tower's rise was actually extremely surprising because before the Elixir Golem's release, it was considered to be an F tier card. We're talking bottom 5. Here's the comparison of the Bomb Tower stats from September 2019 to October 2019. Keep in mind it had been over 6 months since the card's last balance change, so seeing a development like this was truly remarkable and truly showed just how much influence the Elixir Golem had in the meta. Normally a card this strong would get an emergency nerf in no more than a few days, but this would not happen with the Elixir Golem because only a month earlier Supercell had given several emergency last minute changes to the Executioner, and that card was a huge mess because of all that. So they were just kind of taking a break from emergency changes for a while. But one thing remained very clear. The Elixir Golem was overpowered and needed a nerf. Wait a minute. Let's rewind. Some of these events don't appear to make much sense. The main question I thought of first was, why would Supercell buff the Night Witch just days before they knew a Golem alternative was going to be added to the game? Sure, the Night Witch had been falling out of the meta for a while up to that point, but waiting just up until the point where there can be a major development and deciding then is the best time for a major balance change seems a bit odd to me. You'd think you'd wait at least one or two seasons to see how things settle out, just to see if the card literally iconic for being a golem escort could synergize better with the new alternative. You could just think it's an unfortunate coincidence since Supercell wasn't really thinking that ahead and historically they have made some pretty poor balancing decisions. But I don't think that's necessarily what happened in this case, because Supercell never intended the Elixir Golem to be an alternative to the Golem. That's right, this card was never meant to be a beatdown card, which meant Supercell never thought the Night Witch was going to be a great synergizer. 
So if Supercell didn't intend for the Elixir Golem to be a beatdown win condition, what was its intended function? Well, it was actually intended to be an Ice Golem competitor, a competitor to the two Elixir Mini Golem. And that's not just speculation. Seth said in an interview what decks he believed the Elixir Golem was going to work well in just days before it was playable. I think the three archetypes that are going to benefit the most are Graveyard, because it's so much stronger than Ice Golem in terms of an offensive tank. Balloon as well, because Giant Balloon is obviously hard to stop, but Giant Balloon uses up all your Elixir. With Elixir Golem and Balloon, you still have a little bit of Elixir left to cast anything from a Zap to a Fireball. And last, but certainly not least, is Three Musketeers. I think what that deck needs is just more synergistic cards. Ever since the Barbarians got reworked to have lower health, all those Battle Ram sorts of cards don't fit so well with Three Musketeers because they can't absorb lightning. Three Musketeers could maybe play Ice Golem and Elixir Golem and have some very cheap tanks to put on either side. Balloon, Graveyard, Three Musketeers all win conditions that were commonly paired with the Ice Golem. Ice Golem was a versatile mini tank that didn't have much competition, so Elixir Golem was meant to compete, but it ended up not being popular in any of those listed archetypes, at least nowhere near as popular as it was in Beatdown. Perhaps if it was played with those other win conditions, it would have been relatively balanced. But because it was played like a normal golem and not an ice golem, it strayed from its intended purpose from being a secondary win condition to the primary one. Although there were no emergency balance changes, balance changes were monthly at the time, so thankfully players didn't have to wait too long of a time for Supercell to restore some semblance of balance and order to the game. On November 4th, 2019, the Elixir Golem was finally available to play to anyone who didn't unlock it early. But on that same day, the hit points of the Elixir Golem, Mites, and Blobs were all reduced by 10%. The Witch was also softly removed from the game, meaning it got nerfed so bad that it was essentially unplayable. But funnily enough, the Night Witch completely slipped under the radar despite being used in nearly one-third of all Grand Challenge decks throughout the October 2019 season, having very similar rates to the Elixir Golem, it would not be receiving a nerf. It was firmly believed that she didn't need one either, since everyone thought her strength was directly tied to the Elixir Golem and not the buff she received a few days prior. But even after these changes, the Night Witch was still appearing in over a quarter of Grand Challenge decks, while the Elixir Golem was only appearing in 17%. So now it was kind of apparent that the Elixir Golem wasn't carrying the Night Witch, she was doing just fine on her own merit. This means after the Elixir Golem nerf, if anything, the Night Witch was carrying the Elixir Golem. 17% usage is still above average, and this actually made it the second most used win condition behind the Miner. But now you were seeing a lot of Execution or Tornado paired with the Elixir Golem. Remember, this was still during the era where Supercell was balancing the Executioner every 5 minutes, so on the same day as this Elixir Golem nerf, Executioner received yet another rework which made it more popular and several of the top Executioner decks this season included the Elixir Golem. Executioner was changed yet again before the season was over, and thus it wasn't as popular anymore. But Elixir Golem with Night Witch was really all you needed to have success. This purple blob was still vastly overpowered and clearly needed some more adjusting before it would be healthy. So the following month in December, it would receive a rework. Now the Elixir Golem in all its forms would have a hit speed of 1.3 seconds. This was a nice buff to the Elixir Golem and Golemites, but a huge nerf to the blobs. At a glance, it seems like this rework could make the card better, but it actually was a well thought out change. The blobs were the main part of the Elixir Golem that people seemed to be the most adamant about. The four of them combined did twice as much damage per second as a golem before this change. A lot of the time, the Elixir Golem troop didn't even make it to the tower anyway, so even though its hit speed was decreased by seven tenths of a second, which is huge mind you, that change specifically was less impactful than slightly increasing the hit speed of the blobs, because the blobs were consistently connected to the tower because you have to take out the other two forms just to get to them. This change essentially made it so not just the health and damage scaled properly for the different forms, but also the damage per second. This change helped the card take more skill to play because it shifted the incentive to reward players who could keep it in its earlier forms for longer, disincentivizing getting to the blobs quick for high DPS. I think raising the effort it took for players to achieve maximum damage output was Supercell's goal because ever since the Elixir Golem's release, lots of players were complaining about how the card took little to no skill to play successfully. 
Now, naturally, when a card is overpowered, it's obviously going to be much easier to get value out of, since you're getting much better stats for the elixir cost than you should be getting. But the miner had around a 30% use rate around this time, about double what the elixir golems was, and no one was calling that card low skill, even though you probably didn't have to practice a lot to have success with it. It's an interesting assertion for a card like this, because if you played the elixir golem wrong, you were basically giving your opponent free elixir, but a lot of people saw the playstyle of elixir golem to be very easy to pick up and play well. Even though the skill floor may have been low like some other archetypes, the skill ceiling was also low, meaning it wasn't as difficult to push the elixir golem to its fullest potential. I think a big factor that was common in golem but also very prevalent in elixir golem was that a lot of the time you didn't even need to defend. If an opponent started pushing on one side, you as the elixir golem player could just push the opposite lane, ignore your opponent's offensive troops, and you'd probably win the race to the three crown victory. Especially if you could stack multiple elixir golems on the field, you would have so much value out there that could deal a lot of damage very quickly before your opponent would see any of that elixir he was owed. This is why the elixir golem had the highest crowns per win on average than any other win condition. When the elixir golem player won, they won hard. Although this was similar to how the golem was played, there are still some major differences of why the normal golem wasn't nearly as complained about as his purple brother. Arguably, golem took more skill to play because once you played that 8 elixir card, you were left vulnerable since you had little elixir, meaning you had to count elixir and get positive trades and keep track of all those interactions to make sure you had enough of an elixir advantage advantage to time exactly when it's safe to play the card. You had to be very patient when playing Golem, and that very often meant waiting until double elixir to play it. If you failed to be patient enough, your opponent might be able to throw something at the bridge after you played your Golem to take your whole tower. These factors that gave a skill factor to Golem just weren't as present with Elixir Golem, while Elixir Golem kept the benefits. If you played the E-Golem, you could still have 7 Elixir in your hotbar, which was more than enough to defend against anything your opponent could rush at you. So hopefully, if you didn't know before, you understand a bit better now why the Elixir Golem is widely considered to be the lowest skilled win condition in Clash Royale. With all that said, let's now analyze the Elixir Golem's performance for December 2019. First of all, I will note that the Night Witch slipped under the balancing radar yet again, and her use rate was only rising. In December, she was the second most popular card in the game, with her use rate reaching nearly 40% in Grand Challenges. The Elixir Golem was taking hits for an overpowered Night Witch. Supercell just couldn't get over the fact that maybe the buff they gave her back in October was a tad too much. If her strength was tied to the Elixir Golem, then her rate should have gone down when the E Golems went down, but it went the opposite way. But aside from the balance changes, there was a huge development coming in December that the player base was not prepared for. The Battle Healer was added to Clash Royale this season and instantly started being paired with the Elixir Golem to become an iconic duo. The Battle Healer was a fairly balanced card, nothing game-breaking, but still could work significantly well in the right deck. With each hit, the Battle Healer sent out a healing effect to heal all the troops around her. It worked best in beatdown decks because those decks were the decks where you would clump a large amount of troops in big pushes, but the Elixir Golem just so happened to benefit a little bit more than the other beatdown win conditions. Because obviously the Elixir Golem would eventually break down into multiple smaller units. Each battle healer hit healed each blob, allowing them to attack the tower for much longer if unanswered. The battle healer and Elixir Golem sort of became dependent on each other, and it was uncommon from this point on to see one card without the other. Each of them had about the same use in win rates as a result of this. The stats showed that the Elixir Golem was not overpowered, but still a bit on the strong side. It was still a very hated card, but we're just talking pure statistics using the standard Supercell gave. One major thing keeping the Elixir Golem down at this point also was the Bomb Tower. We already talked about how it was rising in October to help counter the Elixir Golem meta. Since it was considered useless before that, you would probably expect its use rates to go down alongside the Elixir Golems. But like the Night Witch, it was actually the opposite. The card's use rate rose to being in nearly a quarter of Grand Challenge decks despite the Elixir Golem's popularity dwindling. Part of this fallout of the Elixir Golem was also thanks to the Arrows. At the end of November the previous season, their damage was buffed so that it dealt barely enough to take out the Elixir Blobs with all its waves. Things were starting to look pretty bad for the Elixir Golem, and it seems like it was only going to get worse. With Night Witch at one of the strongest heights of its history, it was clear that she wouldn't be able to avoid the Nerf Hammer much longer. 
So in January 2020, things were about to take a huge negative turn for the Purple Blobster. The Night Witch, the now second most popular e Golem Synergizer, was getting a nerf in the first set of balance changes of the new year. But on top of that, the Elixir Golem's health would be toned down by 6% for each form. The Bomb Tower also wouldn't be getting any sort of nerf despite its use rate being 10 points higher than the e Golems the previous season. But people were just sick and tired of seeing the Elixir Golem in the meta, and with the new Battle Healer synergizing so well with it, a small nerf seemed more than justified. With all these changes, the Purple Golem was beaten down to just a 3% use rate, but its loyal battle healer companion followed it down the hole. With the Night Witch not being as prevalent thanks to the nerf she received, the Elixir Golem was in a rough spot, but it certainly wasn't out yet. The card was still viable and did work if played right. Considering the hate it's gotten and the chaos it caused for months, this seems like the best spot for the card to be. So from here, Supercell would let it settle for a while. It would be a long time before its next balance change, but there were still some major developments that would occur before then that greatly shifted the e Golem's place in the meta. Before the month was even over, you started to see this Elixir Golem deck with the Magic Archer trending, briefly becoming the top performing deck in Grand Challenges, and causing the Elixir Golem to temporarily have the highest win rate in the game. In February 2020, the Barbarian Hut got a significant rework which made it competitively viable. This development to the hut boosted the Elixir Golem's popularity. The rates of the e Golem were almost exactly average now, but the developments would only keep coming. In April that same year, the Goblin Hut would also get a rework making it super strong, and the Elixir Golem was one of the most popular win conditions you would see it with. On top of that, the Heal spell would also become the Heal Spirit, which was quite strong upon its transformation that month. Thanks to these cards, the Elixir Golem's use rate was able to hold at around 10% for the April season. But this wasn't going to last long, as in May 2020, the Battle Healer, Barbarian Hut, and Goblin Hut were all nerfed. The Heal Spirit and Barbarian Hut were still viable cards, so if you did see the Elixir Golem, it was usually with them. You still saw the Battle Healer in Elixir Golem decks, but because of the hit she took, it obviously hurt the combo's strength. Another likely contributor to the e Golem's downfall was thanks to the Royal Delivery. The reason I'm bringing this up is because it was rumored that this card was specifically released to help deal with the Elixir Golem. This is because it dealt enough damage to fully take out the Elixir Blobs, which no other spell under 4 Elixir could do at the time of the Elixir Golem's release. Sure, the arrows could deal with it by this point, but it's good to have multiple options in competition and allow for flexibility if they decided they needed to nerf the arrow's damage later. The Royal Delivery received a 27% damage buff at the same time as the Hut and Healer nerfs, which made it prevalent in the May 2020 season. So although the Elixir Golem received no nerfs directly, a lot of cards related to him in one way or another were changed in ways to make him worse in the meta. But the following month, Royal Delivery and Bomb Tower would get nerfed, which helped Elixir Golem to be able to sprout again. With the rise of Barb Hut and Heal Spirit and the addition of Skeleton Dragons as a new strong support card, things would turn around as quickly as they got bad in the first place. I don't want to keep going over every single balance change of every single card related to the Elixir Golem and pinpointing exactly how much it rose and fell each season because of it, but I wanted to go over some of it just to emphasize how this card's usage was like a roller coaster and show that it wasn't settling in one place despite getting no balance changes since January. To give you an idea for the rest of 2020, the card's use rate was mainly hovering around 4-5% in Grand Challenges, with no new major developments. However, towards the very end of the year, it did begin to dip and dipped as low as only 1% usage in Grand Challenges, below what was considered to be viable rates. This is easily explained if you look at the December 2020 balance changes where both the Barbarian Hut and the Heal Spirit were harshly nerfed. Supercell had been nerfing every major support card the Elixir Golem worked well with, and the December balance changes were essentially the nail in the coffin. Even untouched synergizers like the Rage Spell and Electro Dragon couldn't save it because they were dependent on the other cards in the deck being good. It was official, the Elixir Golem was no longer competitively viable. 2021 was a very bad year for the Elixir Golem. It clearly wasn't in a good place, but nobody was exactly clamoring for a buff. It would not receive any balance changes throughout all of 2021. I checked dozens of stats throughout the entire year, and at no point did the Elixir Golem's use rate surpass 3% in Grand Challenges with the exception of a very brief period in early April 2021 where it rose to 8%.
This was thanks to a huge buff to the Elite Barbarians, which made them incredibly strong. This Elixir Golem deck was trending for about one week before the Elite Barbarians were emergency nerfed and the rates sunk back down like a rock. Since that is literally the only notable event related to Elixir Golem in 2021, we're going to jump right to 2022. Clearly, nothing was changing with the card. You weren't seeing it flex in and out of the meta like in 2020, it was just a continuation of 2021 always hovering around that 1-2% to usage range. From around April to July, if you did see the Elixir Golem, it was usually played with the newly buffed Mirror, which could now level cards 2 levels higher than its own instead of 1. The Mirror worked pretty well with the Battle Healer because the healers could heal each other which allowed them to heal for much longer. But I hesitated to even mention this development because these Elixir Golem Mirror decks didn't appear to be that popular. The Elixir Golem was commonly agreed upon by the community that it was a weak card, but no one was quite sure what the best way to balance this card would be. People liked the idea of the mechanic behind it, but people hated Elixir Golem metas. Even if there was a way to get him into a perfectly balanced state, he arguably wouldn't have made the game more fun. His fundamental mechanic just wasn't working. A bunch of stats up front for some Elixir to the opponent once they took out all of the blobs was not something that worked because the Elixir they needed to stop the E-Golem wouldn't be received until it was too late. So on August August 2nd, 2022, Supercell would attempt to rectify this issue by giving the card a rework. Now instead of getting one elixir from each blob destroyed, each blob would only give half of one elixir. But now the Golemites would also give half of one elixir, and the elixir golem in his first form would give one elixir when destroyed. This change certainly was going in the right direction. Now instead of needing to get through all three forms for just one elixir, you got two of the four total elixir you were owed just for getting through the first two forms. So now you could get your defensive troops down quicker which ultimately means less damage taken. To compensate for this change, which was clearly a nerf, the health of the elixir golem and golemites was increased by 9%. It still wouldn't have quite as much health as it had originally though. If you've been paying attention to these changes, you'll immediately notice the odd decision made by the balancing team of not including the elixir blobs. Anytime the health or damage was changed to the elixir golem in the past, it was consistently adjusted between all forms, so that an elixir golemite would have half the stats of the elixir golem, and a blob would have half the stats of a golemite. This change broke that consistency. The royal delivery still would have fully taken out the blob if they had received a 9% health buff, so why break the consistency? Well, the one major interaction that would have been affected by a 9% health buff to the blobs is that the arrows would not have been able to fully take out the blobs anymore, so they likely wanted to keep that interaction the same. But Supercell seemed to greatly underestimate how much of a nerf attaching the elixir to the earlier form seems to make, or they were just being extremely cautious, because the elixir golem was in an even worse position after the changes went live. A small health buff did not compensate for how much earlier the opponent was getting elixir. It made a huge difference. So only two months later in October 2022, the elixir golem in all its forms would be getting hit speed buffs. Their hit speeds would all go from 1.3 seconds to 1.1 seconds, and as a bonus, their first hit attack speed was decreased from 1 second to 0.8 seconds. And this would be the last balance change the card would ever receive. Just to be clear, this was a very generous buff. Buffing both the hit speed and first hit attack time by 2 tenths of a second for all forms made a huge difference. Its DPS was increased by about 15% thanks to the hit speed buff, and obviously the first hit attack means in some scenarios they would get an extra hit. Given how bad the previous rework caused it to be though, it definitely needed some good help. It's good they didn't go the route of increasing the health further, because if they had increased it too much, it would counteract the whole point of the original rework. Now given that it's the last balance change it's ever received, you might expect us to be towards the end of the Elixir Golem story, but in fact, it has had a few significant developments since this October 2022 buff. Initially, the rates were still below average, but doing better than it previously had been. But by the end of the month, the Elixir Golem's use rate in Grand Challenges exploded to 24% usage, the highest it's been since its release almost exactly three years prior to this point. It was officially, once again, 
the most popular win condition in Clash Royale. After years of being dormant, it was back in its full glory. One of the interesting things you see when you study history in depth is that you see that it tends to repeat itself. The Elixir Golem wasn't overpowered because of the hit speed buff, it was overpowered because a few weeks after the balance changes, Supercell released the Phoenix, which just so happens to be one of the, if not the most overpowered card in Clash Royale history, and also just so happens to synergize very well with Elixir Golem decks. Just like how the Night Witch was buffed at a bad time because it happened right before the Elixir Golem, a great synergizer was released, the Elixir Golem was buffed at a bad time because it happened right before the Phoenix, a great synergizer was released. But the difference here was is that its rise wasn't mostly because of the buffs, it was really all because of the Phoenix. So this return to the spotlight, like with the Elite Barbarian's Peak, did not last long, because only days after the Phoenix was released, it would receive an emergency nerf, sinking the Elixir Golem's use rate. Phoenix was still pretty good after that though, so the Elixir Golem's rates would hover around 6-8% until mid-December, where they would fall back to the range they were at before the Elixir Golem's August 2022 rework. This correlates perfectly with the December 2022 nerf to the Phoenix where it would now die to lightning. This purple blob would fall back into being borderline useless because a bird died to electricity. 2023 was another relatively uneventful year for the Elixir Golem, but around August through October, you did see a popular Elixir Golem deck rise with the Skeleton King and Evolved Barbarians. I think this deck is notable because it was the first real Elixir Golem meta deck in years to not contain the Battle Healer or Electro Dragon. But of course there were still other variants of which did include some of the more traditional Elixir Golem support cards. And around this time you even saw some top players having success using the Evolved Knight with Elixir Golem. But like many of the previous Elixir Golem uprises, this didn't last. The use rates would tumble around November thanks to the nerfs the cards supporting the E Golem would receive. And since that time, the Elixir Golem has only recently, in February 2024, seemed to make any impact in the meta. This deck, with Evolved Bats and Skeletons specifically, began to trend this season, having great success in competitive play. But I'm sure, like many of the recent upticks, this won't last forever. The Elixir Golem spot in the game has fluctuated pretty randomly in the last few years. It hasn't really been able to stand on its own, but is clearly a very flexible card. Like when the Elixir Golem Phoenix meta was going on in October 2022, the Phoenix was working best with Elixir Golem despite the E-Golem being one of the worst win conditions statistically before that. Phoenix did benefit plenty of other archetypes and win conditions, but they just didn't compare to the difference the Phoenix made to the Elixir Golem. Based on what I've observed about this card, it's clear to me that it could not thrive in a balanced meta. It seems to only be viable with cards that are well above average in terms of strength, and that can never last because those cards will always inevitably get nerfed. I think that's a terrible spot for a card to be in, so I really think the Elixir Golem needs a rework. But given its mechanic, it's tricky to assert what the best route to go would be. I thought about the idea of increasing the elixir cost of the elixir golem, but instead of the elixir going to your opponent, it would go to you instead, so that it would be harder to build up pushes since you would only start getting some of that elixir back once the elixir golem began to die. And this would help avoid the situations where the elixir golem player builds up a push so big that the defender couldn't reasonably defend it. This design idea is to make the elixir golem be more like an elixir collector, in the sense that when it's placed, the opponent opponent has the advantage at first, but if played right, the Elixir Golem player will benefit more in the end if the opponent can't utilize the brief period where they have the Elixir advantage. You could even try something wacky where the Elixir Golemites would give your opponent Elixir, but the Elixir Blobs would give the user Elixir. So the opponent had this incentive to take out the Golem and Golemites, but leave the Blobs alive a bit longer so that they wouldn't give Elixir to their opponent as fast. But of course they would have to take them out eventually or else they would deal too much damage. If the elixir golemites gave the opponent one elixir each and the blobs gave the user half an elixir each, then each player would get two elixir, but since the opponent would get that elixir first, you could still give the elixir golem extra stats for whatever it would cost, knowing the opponent would have an elixir advantage for a little bit once they took down the golemites. And it would be much more balanced for each player to get two elixir, than for one player to get four elixir and the other to get a tower. 
There's so many potential routes to go with this card, it's sad that there hasn't been much of an attempt to fix it just because of the hate the card's received. I understand that increasing its elixir cost would drastically diminish its versatility, but I think Supercell needs to stop pretending this card is meant to be a balloon assister and accept it as the golem's competitor and start balancing it with that new idea in mind. If they don't have any other plans for this card right now, it's probably worth a try, because in most metas, it's never even thought about. If anything, it's just going to be really annoying again once they release the next overpowered card. I just think the mechanic of giving elixir by destroying a troop is so cool that I hate to see it go to waste. And if you don't want to rework it, Supercell, please just buff the blob's health by 9% so it consistently correlates with the other forms again. I don't think that change would break the card, so throw it a bone if nothing else. The elixir golem may have had a toxic past, but if the royal giant can become a healthy win condition, I think it can have a bright future too. Thank you all so much for listening, and I'll catch you all next time.